Hey guys, uh, today I am so excited. Um, I just recently met my guest today. I mean, I didn't meet her today. I met her at a retreat <laughs> and um, she is fantastic. She is unlike anything we've had on the podcast up until this point. So I hope you really enjoy it. I think it will be really great as we go into the new year. Um, my guest is Mindy Hebner. She's an intuition mindset mastery coach, and she's going to explain to us a little bit more about what that means. It's really interesting. And what I really like about today's episode, hold on. I know you're like, but Karina, you're not talking about design. You guys know, you hear me talk all the time about how the designers that I know, designers can be very similar in skill level, but the ones who are making it are the ones that are more confident in themselves. They know they're worthwhile and that those are the ones that are making money. And I think Mindy can um, unpack a little bit of that with us and talk about creativity and feeling of worth, because I think this is going to be really important. So welcome, Mindy. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you. It's good to see you again. It was lovely to meet you at the retreat. And I'm so excited to be here. And thank you for allowing me to pour into and love up on your community. Thanks. This is going to be amazing. Okay. So Mindy, tell us about what you do. Yeah. So I'm an intuitive mindset mastery coach. That means I take the spiritual woo like side and the strategic rubber meets the road action side. And I marry them together so that you can have this beautiful harmony in your life, in your business. My, my biggest mission is helping entrepreneurs, specifically female, have soul aligned businesses, which means your business serves you first. It gets to look exactly how you want it to look so that you feel your best. So you can go out and wow your clients, your customers, your students, whatever that is, <clears throat> by serving yourself first. So many of us get caught in the trap of creating something that doesn't take us into consideration. And we skyrocket. We make a lot of money. I've made a lot of money. And then I had a moment where I realized, ah, I'm burnt out. This is not sustainable. What could I do differently as I move forward? And the one thing I can do differently is believe different things about myself. <clears throat> My biggest limiting belief, and we'll talk about those because those are what's keeping you, one of the things keeping you from skyrocketing your success as a designer. My biggest limiting belief was rest is lazy. And that was just like, can you imagine? Okay, rest is lazy, which means there is no rest. There is a constant 24 seven hustle. Anytime I would take rest, quote unquote, I would feel guilty about it. Releasing that limiting belief, unwiring that and rewiring in a new way was game changer for me. Game changer. Yeah, that's amazing. I do. Okay. So talk to us about like beliefs that move us forward and beliefs that set us back. Absolutely. Is it a real thing? It's a real thing. So <laughs> your brain, your beautiful brain deletes, distorts, and generalizes based on what you believe. You think a thought over and over again, habitually, it becomes an I am. The words we say after I am, some of the most powerful words in the universe. You're already thinking of what you say, I am. Like, I am a designer. I am a mom. I am. And you're now I want you to think about the things that you say about yourself that are disempowering. Because whether you're saying an empowering I am statement or a disempowering one, the next step that happens is you create a habit to prove it. You are that fascinating. You are that powerful that you can think a thought and create something into motion with it. And if you don't believe me, look at your life right now and see where something that you say that isn't serving you anymore, a disempowering belief has created processes that you show up in all the time, habitually, without even like realizing that you're showing up in it. So the reason that your brain deletes, distorts, and generalizes is because there's so much data that comes at us on a daily basis, 60 to 80,000 bits. Your brain can process five to seven. It needs to have a system so you don't look like that exploding head emoji, right? <laughs> so that things come in. It's literally like an email inbox when you have folders set up and filters, it filters it right to, filters it right into the place. So it stays in line with your beliefs. So if you believe 
that your designs are only good enough to charge this much or not quite enough for that much, you win. You're always winning the game you're playing. So fascinating. I love the science part of it. You like, I mean, I've heard of a lot of life coach. Well, you don't consider yourself a life coach, but just the, the different coaches that are talking about, you know, our ideas and our beliefs. And what I like about you is you talk about the science. Do you want to dig more into like, what do you, what's like, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. This is the, your brain is automated for, and your brain hasn't changed in thousands and thousands and thousands of years, right? You were created to, your brain likes to stay in the known. It likes to stay in safety. It likes to stay in belonging, even if you don't want to be there anymore. This is uh, why when we want to do something new, it's easy to talk about like, losing weight or, you know, starting yeah, to exercise. I mean, that, that, those things, why we a couple weeks in, and some of us don't even get a couple weeks in, right. Start to sabotage. It's not because you're not good enough to do this. It's not because, and forget willpower right now, because that's a finite resource. What's happening is in your identity, you are this person that doesn't exercise regularly, that believes X, Y, Z about exercise. And your brain is only seeing the losses in switching your identity in expanding your identity. So you still get to be Karina, the designer. And now you're not leaving that behind. What you're doing is expanding it. And you're becoming Karina, the designer who moves her body so that she can be more creative and productive when she sits down in her studio. So However, your brain deletes, distorts, and generalizes based on your belief, right? So when we try to step into a new way of being, we get to keep reminding ourselves and remembering that the brain doesn't know the difference between an empowered habit and a disempowered habit. It just knows habit. Oh, she thinks this, she feels this, we do this. Boom, boom, boom. And it starts this automated cycle. It loves rinse and repeat. It loves burning the least amount of calories possible. And so this is for your survival. Like this is this is why you're designed this way. The beauty is you're powerful enough to rewire those neural pathways in a way that serves you. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so I keep hearing you talk about identity. We have tons of designers who are struggling to even identify as a designer because they've okay. just gotten started and okay. they're very creative. They might think of themselves as a quilter, a sewer or a crafter, but they're having trouble making that leap to the identity of designer. What would you say to them? Yeah. First, this is another fascinating thing that our minds do. <clears throat> what meaning are you giving to designer? Cause I bet a lot of your students are coming in and going, well, Karina is a designer and I'm not her I haven't done the thing she's done. I haven't, right? Like we look at someone else and we say, oh, well, that's a designer. That's a, and we look at ourselves and go, but that's not me. So we give a meaning, boom, snap judgment. We just give a meaning. Again, your brain loves like burning the least amount of calories, right? And then we walk in that meaning without even realizing it. So my first question would be, what meaning are you giving to the word designer that is stopping you from allowing yourself to put a toe in that box, to start stepping into the path of designer? Because it also gets to grow. I'm going to guess that the first time you identified as as a designer, uh, the designer that you are now, she has had major expansion. She has grown. She has more empowering beliefs. She has allowed all kinds of things to come in to allow that to expand as opposed to limit her. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So what meaning are we giving to designer? And then if you decided that you get to be a designer, what does that look like? Because you can start being her right now. I call this casting votes for your vision. So cast the vision of me as a designer, right? And now, okay, well, what is he or she doing, saying, eating, drinking? Where is he or she hanging out? What are they doing with their time? How do they feel when they sit down in their studio or when they're holding fabric or when they're doing whatever the things are, right? How does a designer version of me feel doing that? 
now I've created this. What I like to say is dive into a swimming pool of it. This is how you get to start walking in the identity of expansion in becoming the person who. Now I can start casting votes for that. Okay, well, she puts lemon in her water. I could do that right now, <laughs> right? She X, Y, Z, or he X, Y, Z, like sets sacred space to do my modules in Karina's course, like whatever that is, or listen to the podcast. I set sacred space to listen to the podcast, take down one thing and integrate. That's what a designer gets to do if that's what you design. I love, you call it casting votes, but in my head, like I heard you say, I was like, it's almost like a checklist. Like a designer does this, a designer does this. And if I'm doing those things, it should be, I should be like in alignment with that. Okay. I'm going to pause. So yes. yes and, uh, you, you get to, you get to cast these votes. If it feels good to have a checklist on, oh, am I showing up like this? Awesome. If at, if at any time it's not feeling good, like, oh, I'm not checking off all the things, pause, cast a vote in the direction that feels good. You don't have to cast them all day long, every single day. Here's what happens. The more you cast them, the easier it is to show up as her. And so as long as we're casting more than not, we're doing it. We're killing it. We're, we're living we're acting as if that's what we call it. We're being so like, having. So it's not like you have to check off everything on the list. Exactly. Like, right. No, that, I think no. that's, I love that. That's so good. Now we're about to, when this podcast episode is coming out, we're about to head into the new years. And you said to me, I really love this. Cause I was like, we should talk a little bit about like, not necessarily like uh, new year's resolutions, but like, it's a, it's a beginning, which I love beginnings and endings. I think this is a great time to like, start thinking about what you guys want to do, um, as designers in the new year. Um, but you said something that I loved and you said that, yes, we're going to take advantage of this, but also you can do this anytime. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. You, you don't need a specific day on the calendar to decide you're going to start expanding. You're going to start stepping into, you're going to Release things that are no longer serving you, old ways of being, uh, old habits, old beliefs, and you're going to start stepping into who you want to be, that vision that you've cast for yourself. I, I also love new beginnings, and January 1st is a great time to cast a vision for the whole year. It, it Get away from New Year's resolution. I'm going to ask you to release from that because all the statistics show that those, those are garbage, right? They don't last for the majority of people. So don't be a statistic, allow yourself the space to cast that vision. And then as you reverse engineer, you're gonna start seeing ways that you get to show up as that person, claim that identity and step in it. They'll become easier and easier. Remember deletes, distorts and generalizes based on your belief. Okay, well, the moment you start believing a little bit in this direction, as opposed to this direction, then your RAS, your reticular activating system will start filtering and allowing you to see things that you didn't see before. So you didn't believe it before. You didn't know it was possible before. Now, you know, oh, that is a choice I could make. I remember when you and I spoke, you said there's two, two paths in your program. Is that is that right? I mean, there's Ish. multiple paths, multiple there paths. Are two paths that are very like most people try to take. They, okay. they either want to be a fabric designer or they want to be like a cricket or a silhouette designer that okay. really incorporates like our Glowforge people and any crap, our crafting people. So, okay. Okay. Awesome. So coming in, right. When they first came in, they might not see the possibilities that are available for them, but as they cast that vision, they pick their path. And they cast that vision for what does this year get to look like? They just start being like, oh, well, I'm going to cast the vote here. I'm going to cast the vote here. I'm going to step into it like this. And this can happen at any moment that you want to do it. Yes, January 1st is a beautiful time to cast a vision for a whole year, a calendar year, right? So you can keep track. You can do the strategic things like we talked about. You can do some tracking. You can look at the KPIs, right? You can look at the numbers. And you also get to do that anytime. There doesn't yeah. have to be a day on the calendar. So release yourself from that. You're really not talking about goals though. I mean, you keep talking about casting a vision. I'm so glad uh, you said that. Yes, I'm so yeah, glad talk you said to that. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Here's 
So a goal is amazing. It is an aim. It's a direction. It's a purpose. All of us have set a goal and not met it. We've actually set it and then forgot all about it. Like, oh, this is a great idea. Boom, gone, out of sight, right? So goals are good. They're an aim, they're a direction, they're a purpose. Greater than a goal is an outcome. An outcome is the result of the action or inaction that you took. Like it's what actually happens. So goals point us in the direction, hopefully of the outcome that we want. Like that's the purpose of them. We get to the outcome, which is what actually happened. What I love for everyone listening is that you get to, the outcome gets to be a great milestone, but it is not the end all be all. The magic is in being the designer who. So if you are operating in the energy of the designer who, well, of course you're going to meet your outcome. Like that, that's just like a cherry on the path to you expanding and allowing all the ways that you get to embody a designer coming in. The outcome is just one and they're great. Like we love outcomes. We love those tangible. Yes. I created this many pieces or I sold this, or I did this. I finished this many modules, like whatever that is, right. We set a goal. We like to achieve it. Feels good for your checklist. People. <laughs> we like those. And anyone can muscle their way to a goal. So think about that. Like I can make myself do X, Y, Z, maybe not any goal, but I can muscle my way to something. If I want to lose weight, I can muscle my way to exercising one, two, maybe three days. And then because if in my identity, I am not the woman who moves her body for joy, I, I, I am not able to get past this, right? I won't continue to do it. We don't want to read one book. We want to be readers. We don't want to hit one outcome. We want to be outcome achievers. We don't want to design one thing muscling through. We want to be designers. So there's a big difference when we step into the identity of the goals and the outcomes and the milestones are amazing reminders of, yeah, we're being exactly who we were made to be. Yeah. I mean, what I'm hearing, which I love this is goals is like down here, like low level, but like casting the vision and an identity is like the next level up. It's the magic. It is how you continue to show up. It is how you actually create the habit of being. Because again, doing is one thing, right? Think you can make yourself do something. You can make yourself do something. Wouldn't it be nicer to be the woman who, the designer who, wouldn't that be nicer to just, because then you're not just forcing yourself to read one book. You're a reader in your identity. Let's look at the opposite side of this. So 28 years ago, I quit smoking. There, I do not wake up in the morning and think to myself, I wonder if I'll smoke today. It's not in my identity. There is no question about operating in that way. So the the other side of that is true too. If I am stepping into the identity of a designer, there's no question about whether or not I'm going to work on a project I said I was going to work on. Do this, reach out to that person, do whatever it, it you start to operate as if. And it, it just adds more ease and joy into who you're becoming when you're embodying the identity. Oh my gosh. This is so good. I was actually just thinking in my head, oh, I think I'm going to just post this in the design suite community. Cause I want to make sure every one of my designers is listening to this and the bonuses, everyone who's listening to the podcast, you guys got to hear this and you get to actually learn more about Mindy, which actually Mindy, will you tell everyone where they can find you? Yes, absolutely. So I, I've just released a limited series podcast uh, all about rewiring your brain. And you can find me at mindyhebner.com forward slash podcast. Awesome. And we're going to put those links in the show notes for you guys. Mindy, thank you so much for coming. That was amazing. And we, we've never talked anything about mindset. I mean, like you, you guys know, I talked to you guys about thinking that you're good enough, worthy enough, but I think coming from this totally different angle is really, really fascinating to me. And really, I didn't even understand this kind of coaching until about six months ago when I started kind of seeing, although you do something really different, you're, you're the way you're, you strategize and do it is really different from what I've heard. Do you want to explain that a little bit? 
Sure, so, absolutely. So I, my favorite way to help women, which I'm obsessed with rewiring the brain, my favorite way to do that is through my laser coaching program. And these are 20 minute or less sessions where boom, because everyone's busy, right? We're all busy. Ain't nobody got time to be hanging out forever in a session. We want to come in, get to the root, get it out and move forward. And that's what laser coaching does. It really, if you came in with a limiting belief about how much to charge, uh, what designs are and, or uh, like your confidence level, we get to the root of that. We shift through it. What's a new, more empowered belief. Here's homework. So here's some action steps, either mental, physical, emotional, spiritual action steps to take to keep you moving in the direction of this new, more empowered belief of who you were made to be. So it's very, it's, it's quick in a way that you don't have time to get stuck in any of the old stuff. You get just, just move forward and you've got aligned action to solidify that in for yourself and keep becoming the designer who, or the human who. I love that. So good. Oh, thank you so much, Mindy. Okay. You guys, we're going to have, um, links in the show notes. Um, this has been an amazing episode. Um, I hope that you guys are having a great holiday season right now and that you're able to move into the new year, just excited, excited for what's to come. And we will see you guys soon. Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.